Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Basics series on differential equations. Uh, this video is going to go over Laplace transformations, which is a nice way to solve differential equations if you uh, are not good with differential equations. So um, it's, it's much easier, in my opinion, because if you're given a second order differential equation, you don't have to find two different solutions and add them together. You just do it all in one foul sweep. There is quite a bit of algebra involved. And another part where Laplace, where Laplace transforms um, excel at solving uh, solution, or at finding solutions where um, normal methods of what we've gone over uh, solving differential equations just don't work it are um, impulse forces and step functions. And uh, so impulse forces is at one moment, uh, you're given, there's a big spike, goes all the way up to infinity actually, and the rest of the time at zero. And step functions is at zero up until a certain point and then, um, and then it's some number, uh, actually, yeah. It's some number k. Usually, uh, if this k is 1, it's 1, and so on. So, but um, we'll go over step and impulse forces um, in the next video when we go over shifting theorems and how to solve these and how to use them uh, constructively in solving differential equations. Uh, but for now, let's just get into how to solve differential equations using Laplace transforms, um, which uh, there's really no real uh, motivation. Laplace was just a really uh, interested in solving for uh, and like probability and that kind of stuff, and he noticed that this weird integral could transform functions and make them algebraic. And so now we have Laplace transforms. But how do we solve them? Um, so we're given a differential equation that uh, could be first order, second order, uh, homo homogeneous, non-homogeneous. And then you make that into an algebraic equation using a Laplace transform, I guess. That arrow should be going the other way. So you Laplace transform, differential becomes algebraic. Um, you solve that algebraic form for uh, for y of s, and then the and then you invert. And then you invert your uh, your uh, y of s that becomes y of t. Um, this might all sound kind of crazy. I'm going to go over it, how to do it, in, in just a second. So um, first, let's let's focus on this. Uh, Laplace transform part. So, uh, what I said before is the Laplace transform of any function of t um, is equal to um, this indefinite integral that goes from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times f of t. So this is going to give your answer in terms of kind of constants. or uh, It's going to look very algebraic. So there's going to be fractions, subtractions, uh, exponentiations, uh, all kinds of shins. And so uh, I'm just going to go over the most basic case of this so you kind of get a feel for how Laplace transforms work. Uh, but usually, you're just going to be looking at a sheet. You can just Google Laplace transforms, and it'll give you a bunch. So like the Laplace transform of sine of t is equal to, or the Laplace transform of cosine of t, um, and it'll all be on a list. Um, but let's just do one so you get, can get a feel. And if you're so inclined, you could try to find cosine of of whatever, like e raised to something, or um, yeah, just knock yourself out. And you, you might notice that if you get real crazy with it, that this does not exist. And in that case, uh, the Laplace transform does not exist. So 
Uh, right, the basic case is the Laplace transform of just some constant k. So we set up an improper integral with uh, b going to infinity. And we can pull out this k, since it, of course, it's just a constant. Now we just have to evaluate this improper integral. So we've gotten to the almost last step. And as b goes to infinity, that's just going to drop off, drop off, go to 0. And um, this is just going to, this e raised to 0 is, going, is just going to be 1, no matter what. And um, so what we have is the Laplace transform of k is equal to k over s. Um, so uh, uh, so I've just gone ahead and written some of the basic uh, Laplace transforms. So we have f of t over here and the Laplace transform of f of t there. So um, one thing, you, you should uh, familiarize yourself with these. Uh, mine are printed out on a sheet that looks like this. Um, Honestly, just Google Laplace transform table and you'll find a plethora of, of images. Uh, you don't need to memorize these. Um, uh, worst case scenario, you lose your sheet and you have to use the formula uh, to, to derive the Laplace transform. And that's no biggie. Uh, and one thing to note is there is Laplace transforms of the derivative and second derivative of y. Uh, uh, that's a fun little exercise. I'll leave that to you to do. So um, one thing to note also uh, when solving is that Laplace transforms are linear, which means that if you have um, if you have uh, some sum of uh, of functions, uh, then the Laplace transform. The Laplace transform, you're just going to, going to transform each of these and, and add them up as you would a uh, regular uh, thing that obeyed linearity. So without uh, further ado, we're just going to hop into some basic examples of Laplace transforms. So here we have some sum of, of functions, and they all appear on our chart here, so there's nothing to worry about. So we're just going to go one by one. Um, e to the negative 2t is e to the at, where a is equal to negative 2. So we just have uh, 1 over s plus 2. And then we add the Laplace transform of sine of 3t, which is just uh, 3 over x squared plus 9. Uh, should I just leave that as 3 squared? Because sometimes it's easier. Sometimes when solving Laplace transforms, it's not always best to simplify down. Um, actually, a lot of the times, it's detrimental to uh, solving the equation if you just simplify everything down. You want to find something in the form of, of of one of these. So I'm just going to leave that as s squared plus k squared. And then minus uh, the Laplace transform of 5, which is just a constant. So we have 5 over s. So um, that's, that's kind of uh, one of the more basic equa uh, examples I could give you. So let's just hop into a more, uh, a more involved example. Actually, we're not going to do a more involved example of Laplace transforms. I'm just going to go, going to go uh, so so go into Laplace inverse, which, uh, if you recall, we did. Um, so this was just inverting, and then you will solve for uh, 
you will isolate y as a function of s. So if, if you notice here, y, y of s pops up, and you're going to have those if you're solving a differential equation. Um, so you isolate y of s, and then you invert it. And so we're just going to go into inverting um, like the inverse Laplace transform. So again, we just have kind of a, a basic things. We notice that this is, uh, if we have, um, so k squared, or uh, so we have s minus a raised to 3, which is just 2 plus 1. And then we have 2 factorial up here. So this is just gonna, going to be um, There's going to be t squared e to the 4t. And then this is s over s squared plus 16. Um, and 16 is a perfect square, it's 4 squared. So we have s over s squared plus 4 squared, which is cosine of 4t over there. So now we've done our basic Laplace inverse. So now we're going to hop into some more. Uh, involved, we're going to hop into some more involved examples and then solve our, your first, or maybe first, um, uh, initial value problem. So we have, we want to invert 1 over s squared plus 4s. Um, we didn't have the chart, there's no real easy way to do that. So we're just going to factor and see uh, how we could kind of pull out something that looks like one of these. So now we have um, 1 over s times s plus 4, which uh, kind of looks like k over s time, uh, times k over uh, s plus 4. And so we're going to use partial, partial fraction decomposition to Break up this uh, this into a sum into two uh, into a sum of things so that we can use the linearity principle and invert each part separately. So um, again, partial fraction decomposition states that uh, if we have the two factors down here, then um, we're going to have uh, some fraction with one factor plus some fraction with the other, and just solve for a and b and, and break that down into, into the sum of two fractions. So I've multiplied by s times s plus 4. Uh, right off the bat, let's just set s equal to 0. So a is equal to 1 fourth. And then we can set s equal to negative 4. So, so b is equal to negative 1 fourth. So now we can write this Laplace transform as the sum of two. Um, we can write this in, inverted in, uh, Laplace inverse transform as the Laplace inverse of two separate uh, things, which looks easy enough because we have k over s, s plus 2 squared. Um, uh, or we'll have, we have some k over s minus or s plus k, or s plus a, and then we have, uh, we'll have k over s, so that looks easy enough to do. So this first part here is easy enough, it's just k over s, so we have one fourth, and then we're going to pull out the negative one one fourth here and have uh, the Laplace inverse of one over s plus four. And if um, oh, so there's we don't really need to massage this at all. We just have um, uh, e to the minus four t since this is positive, this is negative, so a is negative. So. Uh, that's, that's how you would solve a Laplace transform if you're using partial fraction decomposition. Uh, 
we're just going to do uh, one more kind of involved example until we hop into um, an, initial an initial value problem. So now we have the Laplace inverse of 12 over s squared plus 4s plus 29. Uh, nothing, nothing appears in, the, in this chart here. So we're going to factor this using completion of the squares. And so we have uh, half of 4 is equal to 2. So we're just going to have uh, s plus 2 squared plus 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 29 is 25, s plus 2 squared plus 25. So we have uh, some constant here, a constant square, or we have s minus negative 2 squared here, and we have 5 squared there. Um, that looks an awful lot, what does it look an awful lot like? It looks like e to the at sine of kt, the Laplace inverse of that. However, we would need this up here to be 5. Uh, so we're just going to make it 5. How uh, we make that 5? So um, if we just um, divide this by 12, multiply by 5, um, We've, we've made this 1 by 5, but if we do this here, we have to keep everything the same. Uh, so since we divided by 12 and multiplied by 5, we're going to multiply the whole thing by, five, by 12 and divide the whole thing by 5. So just doing algebraic manipulations, we have uh, S minus negative 2 plus 5 squared, um, all being divided, or uh, 5 dividing all of that. So uh, we have our simple um, e to the at times the sine of kt, where k is equal to 5 and a is equal to negative 2. And that's your, uh, that's solving a Laplace inverse using completion of the squares. Um, yeah, let's hop into an initial an initial value problem, so we can get inverting or we can get Laplace transforms uh, solving for y of s and isolating that, and then inverse Laplace transforms all under one roof, and uh, kind of knock out the basics of Laplace transforms. So uh, we're given a second order differential equation with some f of t. Uh, and we're given y of 0 is equal to 0, and y prime of 0 is equal to 1. So let's just top right in. Um, so we're just going to Laplace transform each individual part, and then um, see what we can do from there. Um, one thing to note is just the Laplace of y is just, uh, the, pl the Laplace transform of y as a function of t is just y as a function of s. That's just your basic um, conversion there. So um, I'm just going to plug in our initial conditions, make this nice and easy. Um, and yeah, that A is actually supposed to be a 9. I misread my notes. But yeah, it happens. So we have um, uh, put together our, our Y of S terms. So we have S squared plus 9 is equal to 1 over S squared plus 1, plus 1 because we have an extra negative 1 on this side. So now we're just going to isolate Y of S. And we can almost um, just invert this whole thing all the way through, except this doesn't look very pretty, so we're going to use some partial fraction decomposition on that. Uh, 
And note that since we have um, uh, squared terms on the bottom, this has to be uh, linear, not just constant. So uh, we have AS plus B and CS plus D. Um, that's just going to add a couple more constants that we have to solve for. No biggie. We're just going to go ahead and solve this uh, as we would. And there's no real easy um, choice to put um, to 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 um, make s such that something disappears. So we're just going to match coefficients. Uh, so expand these out, uh, foil them out, and um, see what our s squared terms are, what our s terms are, and what our constant terms are. So we have uh, AS cubed plus CS, or so we'll have A plus C uh, times S cubed. Uh, and if you notice, there are no S cubed terms over here, so we have we have A plus C is equal to zero. And so now onto S squared, we have um, uh, B plus D times S squared. So and there are no S squared terms here, so we have. So we have b plus d is equal to 0. And um, well, onto our s terms, we have 9a plus c is equal to 0. And then now onto our constant terms, we have 9b plus d. And that's going to be equal to 1, since 1 is a constant term. Since we have two things where we have a plus c uh, equaling 0, uh, a and c are both going to be equal to 0. Um, and so now we just have to solve for b and d. And we can note that b is equal to negative d. So d is equal to negative 1 eighth, b is equal to 1 eighth. Um, which is nice because we've, we've got rid of these uh, CS and AS because those are both zero. Uh, so where were we? We're here. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Uh, yeah, I forgot to divide the 1 by S squared plus 9. Just did that, uh, didn't affect anything, because all we were looking at was sim simplifying this here term. So now we have uh, s squared plus 1, s squared plus 9, uh, constants all on the top. Uh, it looks very nice. Uh, take a moment and pull out your uh, Laplace transform sheet, and you'll notice that these look similar. We still will have to massage this a little bit. Um, so we're taking the Laplace inverse of the left and the Laplace inverse of the right. Um, so notice here we just have 1 on the bottom, so that's 1 squared. Uh, if we pull out this 1 eighth, we will have um, 1 eighth times the sine of t, I believe. Um, yep, so k is equal to 1, so we have... And now um, we're going to pull out the 1 8th here again. But then we're just going to have 1 over s squared plus, And that's 3 squared. And so we want to have a 3 up here. So we're going we're gonna to multiply 1 by 3. So we have to also divide by 3 here. And that's sine of 3t. And then um, again, we're just going to re 
rinse and repeat for this, except we don't have a uh, we don't have a one eighth to pull out, so that's one third sine of three t. And so um, that's uh, I guess I could. So, uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to simplify that. You could subtract one third three t from one twenty fourth sine of three t, but um, that's a good exercise for you, I guess, if you want to get better at algebra. So, yeah, that's how you solve basic uh, Laplace transforms. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve uh, step functions and impulse functions and all that fun stuff, uh, shifting theorems and whatnot. So you can click to the next video here. Also find links to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check out the rest of the videos in this playlist. Or visit our website where you can and should buy this uh, differential equations uh, textbook. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.